The meeting of the Faculty Senate will come to order. Um, please, a reminder for everyone, please put their uh, cell phones on stun or silent or whatever is the appropriate uh, <coughs> uh, thing so they don't ring. Um, uh, Potomac State, are you there? Ha and how many are present? And I can even see you, it's fantastic. So, And uh, WVU Tech, how many are present? Okay, could you repeat that? Okay, I'm getting, f looks like three people are present at uh, WVU Tech. So if that's correct, don't say anything. Okay, I'm gonna take that as correct. Okay, thank you. So we do have a quorum for today's meeting, so. Um, welcome everybody, welcome back from uh, Thanksgiving. I hope it was a enjoyable Thanksgiving for everybody. So for approval, first up on the agenda is the minutes of the November 9th Faculty Senate meeting. Um, these were distributed with the um, uh, meeting agenda last week. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Hearing no corrections, uh, the minutes stand approved as written. So next on the agenda is uh, the report from the president, who we've lost momentarily. Well, actually, we've, uh, he sends his apologies. He's actually at an event in uh, New York City uh, and won't be giving his report. And uh, also uh, Provost McConnell is with him at that uh, uh, event. So uh, we have Russ Dean to give the Provost report. Thank you. It's uh, kind of hard to believe that we're ending another semester at the university. It's, uh, it seems like it was just a couple weeks ago we were going through the welcome week and the orientation sessions and all that, and yet here we are ending another semester. And I think finals start, what, Thursday? So um, thank everybody for all their hard work this semester. I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't thank you yet because there's a lot more hard work to come for the next week and a half while we wrap up grades, but really, we really appreciate everything that everybody does to uh, support our students and uh, get research and service of the university done. Um, I have a few announcements to make. Uh, the LGBTQ Center Director and Interim Director have both been hired. Uh, many of you know Dr. T. Ann Hawkins uh, from the Cruz Center will serve as the interim for the next few months. And then Dr. Chris Mayo, a nationally known scholar in the field, will be our permanent director and coming on, I believe, in summer? August. Um, search is also underway for a program coordinator to support the, uh, the center's activities. I want to bring you up to date on a number of searches going on at the campus. Um, we're just about wrapped up the uh, search for the Everly Dean. Uh, we have, we've come to terms with the candidate for all the terms of the agreement. Uh, the letter will be uh, crafted in the next day or two. We expect it to be signed and probably make a public announcement either at the end of this week or the very beginning of next week. So, long process but I think everyone will be very pleased with the results of that process and I think um, I think the person who's been selected and has agreed to take the position is going to be excellent in the role and will do a lot to help bring the college together and uh, craft uh, a very uh, effective strategic vision for the future. Uh, the College of Business and Economics Dean searched this past weekend. I understand there were airport interviews in Pittsburgh for 11 candidates. Uh, the, the search committee is in the process of narrowing that group down, but I believe they're on a fast track, and some candidates may even be in on campus between now and the break for the holidays. So that, that, uh, that search is moving along fairly rapidly at this point. We're also searching for an associate vice president for research and development. That process is near the end as well. I believe the f a candidate was brought back to campus for some final discussions. So again, I expect that announcement to be coming out in the next few days. Um, we had two candidates on campus in the last couple of weeks for the executive, executive director of recruitment, and uh, the, that process is coming to a conclusion. Um, I imagine in a fairly near future, a decision will be made on that search. 
And then we have just launched the search for the Dean of WVU Online Continuing and Professional Education. This is the replacement of Sue Day Perutz in her, her previous role before she became the Associate Provost of the University. So um, those are all underway at this point. And oh yes, one other thing, we have a five-year review of Dean Paul Kreider of the College of Creative Arts. The, um, as some of you who are in the college or maybe across the campus have received those questionnaires, those results have come back. Uh, Dean Kreider will be meeting with the, the uh, review committee right after the first of the year and we imagine we'll wrap up that review probably around the end of January or early February. So that, that's what I have to report. I'd be glad to answer any questions that anyone might have. Oh, one, just one quick thing. I did read a note and I was talking with our um, Chief Information Officer John Campbell, I guess Blue, the new SEI system, has been running with some pilots and from what we're seeing is going fairly well. The results coming back from the students are good. The, um, at least the few of the reports we've got so far is the response rate has been high and I know that's a fear we've all had whether the response rates would be, decline, would be depressed on an electronic SEI. Um, all appearances are that that's going well and we're getting good response rates. So I thought you might be interested in hearing that. Any other, any questions? Great, thank you. Uh, thanks, Russ. Um, I'm uh, uh, assuming or uh, taking it that um, if there are questions from Potomac State or WVU Tech that they will make themselves heard, okay? So next on the agenda, uh, invite um, Chief of Police, Bob Roberts, to the podium um, with all the activities that um, we've been seeing in the news and um, especially the uh, the incident in uh, Bend, Oregon and then recently in San Bernardino. I thought it was a, a good opportunity for um, Bob to come and talk to us about emergency operations training. So Bob. Hello everybody. Good to be back with you again. Uh, um, it has been a trying time here recently with the events going on but I think as you look back over the past 20 years, I think what we have to kind of do is put these things in perspective. If you look at most of the mass shootings that have happened, there's three contributing issues. One's mental health, which is primary in a lot of different situations that occur. The other is domestic violence. And the other is human resource issues. So what does that mean to us? Well, the mental illness is where if you see something going on out there, you need to report it so that we can hopefully address it beforehand. If you haven't had a chance, if you go to the WVU police site, you can go there now and you'll find a banner across the top and the last one on it will be threat assessment. That threat assessment allows you to send in anonymous tips to us so that we can get them into our threat assessment committee and team and evaluate those. Otherwise, you can just call our office and we'll take them. Uh, but that's one of the things we need. Another thing that I want you to think about in your workplace is if one of your colleagues has been having a domestic violence issue and they've gotten a protective order, that's important that they learn to share that with everybody else. And number two is it's, it's good if they can bring a photo of the person in so that people who typically see people coming in and out of your buildings would know who they are and can call us so that we can respond and deal with those early. Those are important. Uh, the other thing is on our website, when you first turn it up on our homepage, you'll find training. There's two training sections on there. One is for students. The other one's for employees. In there, there's two DVD training sessions. One is called Flashpoint. Flashpoint is designed to tell you what to look for in people who may be getting ready to act out in violent ways. The second one is called Shots fired. Shots fired is specifically designed to tell you what to do in case there's a shooter in your facility. These are things that you can take at your own time. If you prefer to have us come in and do the training, please call us and we'll come in and do those. I want you to understand that West Virginia University, when you look at us statistically, our statistics are very low. Um, we're below all the peer institutions except for maybe in one or two categories, which may be because we report them more closely than they do, I'm not sure. Uh, one of the areas I can tell you I know that we do, and it's on alcohol, 
because I've talked to some of them and they say we tell them if it's alcohol, don't call. So I know we're doing a better job than that. Uh, two other things that, how many of you have signed up for WVU Alert? Make sure you do that because as the snow flies, you'll find out before anybody else when we're closed. Number two, live safe. I don't have as many people on Live Safe. I want you to go out and sign up for Live Safe. Live Safe is an application that's free to you. It allows you to communicate directly to our comm center. Uh, right now, we're doing a push for the next three days to do an electronic safety audit of campus. So everybody on Live Safe got a message this morning saying, hey, if you see lights out, uh, trip hazards, or any other kind of safety issues on campus, Send them in to us and we'll take care of them. So we want you to get on Live Safe. An extra thing with Live Safe is if you're out at night and you're going to be walking somewhere, it has an electronic escort service on it. You can send a, a message to a friend of yours and say, I'm leaving the library and I'm going to the garage. I should be there in five minutes and it will actually allow them to track you on your trip from the library to the garage or all the way home for that matter. If you're out on the rails to trails, you can do the same thing. So I encourage you to sign up for that. It's free. You can find that on our website as well. Uh, I ask if you go onto the site, go to the emergency management section, you will find a little section on the right side of that screen that says emergency flip chart. Print that emergency flip chart. That emergency flip chart will tell you 99.9% .9 of what you need to know to deal with almost any emergency that we will see in this community. I encourage you to do that. It's also in the LiveSafe app, so you'll have it on your phone if you sign up for LiveSafe. Uh, the other thing is each building has a building emergency plan. It's called a BEP. You should contact your building supervisor to make sure that you know what's in those. And when all else fails, call three cops, 2677, and we'll get somebody there to help you. Um, is there anything I can answer for you? Last thing I'll ask is if you would be so kind in the future on your syllabus to add about five minutes at the first class that you teach to go over with your class what to do if there's an emergency. Because a lot of these young people, it's the first time they've been away from home, they don't know what to do. If you can put that five minutes in your syllabus, it may save their lives or your own. So I encourage you to do that. We're here to help you. Uh, if you see something, report it, doesn't matter how small it is. We'd rather respond to a hundred of those little small things that turn out to be nothing than to miss that one small thing that turns into something. I want you all to have a happy holiday. And Yes, ma'am? Could you go to the mic, please? Just announce who you are. Sure. Lisa Trushinsky with the Dominion Post. Um, when you said the stats, WVU stats are low, which stats were you talking about? Our cr uh, criminal stats, where we do comparisons between us and the other schools on the Clary Act, which are mm -hmm. Group A and Group B offenses, mm -hmm. okay. things such as uh, murder, sexual offenses, uh, burglaries, robberies, those kind of things. Okay, thank you. And for those who don't know, we post those every month, so they're accessible to you. And there's crime maps on there as well. Anything else? I hope you all have a happy end of the semester and a happy holiday. And again, if you need us, call. Thank you very much. OK. Thank you, Bob. Um, next up is uh, my report. So um, we had a fairly busy uh, November. Um, on the 10th, we, uh, the group of us, including uh, Lena Mayner, myself, Bob Griffith um, from faculty, um, Dixie Martinelli and Lisa Martin from the Staff Council, and George Capel from uh, Student Government, and Oliver Street from the uh, Provost Office, uh, from the um, Registrar's Office, uh, flew down to Beckley, uh, toured the campus there, and then were shuttled to Montgomery for a meeting with TAC. Um, I think we were all really impressed for, for many of us that was the first time we'd seen the, um, um, the um, campus at Beckley and just you know, realized what a, 
a fantastic bargain we got in purchasing that. Uh, and that's going to be a really fantastic uh, home for, um, for tech in the future. Uh, we met with a group of faculty to discuss uh, various harmonization processes that uh, are required for between t uh, the two campuses at uh, Montgomery and WVU in terms of bringing the electronic catalog and course catalog online. Um, we talked about the new uh, SEI system and uh, we got one or two volunteers from tech who I think are involved in the, uh, the pilot program. <coughs> and then uh, talk to faculty about various other issues. Uh, obviously, um, the, the big one was the move to Beckley, and the overwhelming response was very positive. I think they're all uh, willing and raring to go there. Um, a couple of people who sort of live in Montgomery maybe are not quite so keen, but the majority, vast majority of the faculty are, are very uh, keen on moving there, and the sooner the better, I think. Uh, and then on the following Friday, uh, Lena Mayner, Dixie Martinelli, and Shani Warris from the SGA and myself drove down to uh, Kaiser to visit with Potomac State. Uh, again, we had a campus tour, looked at the Student Learning Center and the Learning Commons area, which is uh, coming on very nicely. Uh, we talked with President Kaleli and Dean uh, Odom Tete regarding various issues. Um, it was clear that they were keen on um, sort of uh, getting some WVU branding at the Kaiser campus. They thought that that would greatly help recruitment. Uh, I believe that's an ongoing thing with uh, Sharon Martin and uh, the um, central administration, but I think that's going to come about. So they're, they're very positive that um, with that, that they can really sort of start to increase their numbers in the enrollment. Um, then we talked to, also talked about some faculty issues. Uh, again, the electronic uh, SEI um, was brought up and uh, we talked a little bit about the pilot there. And then there was some faculty governance issues uh, which they're working through and hopefully they will be putting in place a, a new faculty governance um, um, document and pr process by the end of this academic year. Um, update on the new faculty web Senate website, uh, moving along, um, we have pretty much all the information from the uh, GECCO committee, uh, just adding the finishing touches to that. Um, the, uh, we're also trying to um, get the information from the Senate curriculum committee, which is a little bit uh, behind, but uh, hopefully we'll move forward on that through the, um, the holidays. So again, I'm hoping to have a kickoff and have a demonstration at the January meeting. I may put that back to the February meeting if um, it's just a question of a, a couple of weeks additional time that we need for, to get everything up and running. Um, the, the last thing I have to report is um, I met with um, <coughs> Vice Provost, Dean uh, Sude Perutz, I think that's right. Um, Associate Provost, uh, regarding um, some people had some uh, questions from the outside community about days of special concern. Um, one thing that we're going to try to turn, I've been talking to John Campbell about this, is actually put, um, try to put the university calendar, sort of superimpose that on the Outlook calendar that a lot of us use for scheduling. So that would probably include the university hospital. Uh, holidays and then also puts uh, some information on the days of special concern so when you start scheduling things you would see that um, those uh, those days would not be blocked out but you would be aware of them as you schedule things so hopefully that will be a, we'll be able to report more on that in the future so with that um, I would open up the floor uh, to any questions And Potomac State or WV Tech, if you have questions, please chime in. Okay, so hearing none, um, I guess I'll move on to the next uh, item in the agenda, which is um, the Curriculum Committee report, and Karen Haynes is stepping in again for Matt Valenti. Karen Haynes, Communication Sciences and Disorders. Um, Matt asked me to make a few announcements first. 
Uh, first of all, Psych and STAT have had a meeting uh, concerning Psych 203 and 204, which we discussed at the last Senate meeting, and that has resulted in, a, in an agreement resulting in STAT supporting Psych. Um, so you will see that the courses are again listed in Annex 1. Um, also, he wanted me to mention that the alterations report is now listed as for information, that looking at past agendas, alteration reports had been for information until October 2013, but then were changed to for acceptance. So a little uh, research was done by the um, Faculty Senate Secretary, and uh, they discovered that for acceptance is reserved just for end of year committee reports. The idea being that acceptance means the Senate has accepted the report but, but does not necessarily endorse its recommendation. So alterations report is now being listed as for information. And then also new minors will come through as for information. Uh, the flow for minors doesn't require faculty center, Senate approval, but the committee and Associate Provost Sue De Perutz felt that new minors should be announced to the full Senate. So those were just a few announcements he asked me to present to you all. So first, for your approval, we have the new courses report, and that is Annex 1. So are there any objections or points of discussion for Annex 1? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor of approving Annex 1, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say no. Potomac State, how do you vote? Two ayes. And WVU Tech, how do you vote? Four ayes. Four ayes? Yes. Okay, thank you. So we will, I guess, revise the... Uh, person count at tech from three to four. Okay, so the ayes have it and Annex 1 is approved. Next we have for information is the LGBTQ studies minor, Annex 2. Okay, so this is for information. Is there any objection or points of discussion for Annex 2? Since there are no objections, Annex 2 is filed. Next, for information, we have the alterations report, which is Annex 3. Are there any points of discussion or objections for Annex 3? There's a question, okay. I have a question concerning uh, the proposed new prerequisite for exercise physiology 364. Uh, we currently have about, I, my name is Peter Jacoby, I'm from the College of Physical Activity and Sports okay. Sciences. And so uh, that's for Math 126 as a prerequisite. Uh, we wanted to know, uh, my colleagues and I were interested in how this was going to affect current majors since we have approximately 500 students who uh, are required to take that class and if it's going to impact the current content of the class. So we just wanted to put that quest, those questions Okay. And this was scheduled to go into effect in spring 2016. So if given the, that concern, we can certainly pull it from our report and we can research that and come up with an answer. I don't have that information in front of me. Would that be acceptable? Yes, I think that's fine. So, are there any other questions on Annex 3? So, what we'll do is that we'll file Annex 3 without that, that yes. course. Yes. Okay. Very good. All right. And then lastly, for your approval, we have the Capstone Courses Report Annex 4. Are there any questions or points of uh, discussion or objections to Annex 4? Hearing none. Uh, all those of, in favor of approving Annex 4, please say aye. Those opposed say no. 
Potomac State, how do you vote? Maybe you could repeat that. Two eyes. That's great. And WVU Tech, how do you vote? Four eyes. Four eyes? Okay. Well. <laughs> Four eyes. So the eyes have it, and Annex 4 is approved. Thank you, Karen. So next I'd like to invite Dave Hauser to the podium to give us the uh, report from the Gecko Committee. Uh, so in the continuing efforts to get the new GEF uh, up and running, this is a revision to the previous language. Uh, the way the GEF, GEF is structured is it has seven focus areas, which roughly equate to some of the GEC areas from the past. It also has a depth area where students can take uh, three previously approved GEF uh, courses. This expands that to allow students to do a minor, a second major, or a second degree and have that count as fulfilling their GEF requirements. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I think this is a, a very nice sort of addition to what um, the committee has worked on in terms of uh, the, the focus area, the so-called focus area, so it keeps the original uh, intent open. Yeah. So are there any co uh, comments or uh, points of discussion for Annex 5? Since there are no objections, <laughs> Annex 5 is fine. Thanks very much. Uh, next up is Roy Nutter, Dr. Roy Nutter with the ACF report, if he has anything. Roy Nutter College, Statler College of Engineering. Um, Jennifer and I attended the ACF meeting and the HEPC meeting on November 20. Uh, I presented the ACF annual report. And as a point of note, HEPC passed series 17 on transfers. And I didn't warn Jennifer. Would you like to speak to that? No. She would not. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> well, there, to put it quickly, there are a number of committees, I think I said this last time, that our meeting mathematics is, has met once. I think science has met once and looks like they're going to divvy up into smaller committees, maybe chemistry, biology, physics type committees is my understanding. And uh, we'll probably see more from that in the spring, I guess is a kind of quick review of it. Uh, ACF, uh, not really much going on. We're kind of just biding our time waiting on the legislative session at this point. That completes my report. Okay. So are there any questions for Roy? No? Okay. No. Thank you very much. Um, next up is Dr. Robert Griffith with a Board of Governors report that is or isn't. There is no Board of Governors report. We, we will meet again uh, one week from Friday. Uh, the only things I know in advance are on the agenda is a couple of modifications to a couple of Board of Governors policies regarding uh, sexual misconduct. Okay, so I, I guess we'll wait to hear from you next time, unless no, there are no, other no questions. I'll hear from you because I'm going to be in Japan at the next board meeting. Ah. <laughs> we'll see about that. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks, Bob. Um, so I, t I think we're up to item 11 now, so I'll invite uh, C.B. Wilson to the podium. He's going to talk about some proposed modifications to the Board of Governors Policy 2. Well, good afternoon. Um, what you have in your packet, of course, is the uh, text of Board of Governors Policy 2. The last time that this document was revised was in 2008. That was before uh, the current uh, community college group was formed out of HEPSI. It was also a point at which uh, WVU Parkersburg was still a bona fide part of WVU. Now it's kind of not exactly a part of WVU. But in any case, 
uh, the impetus for suggesting that some changes be made in policy two, including those, came from uh, the, our faculty incentive and reward working group. Uh, the essence of the substantive change that is identified in this draft is to modify term appointments uh, or the language about term appointments, which presently allows for term appointments of up to three years for uh, th those in the so-called TAP group, that is teaching associate or assistant professors or whatever, and we're proposing that upon promotion to teaching associate professor that the term uh, be possibly extended to a six-year period, and upon promotion to full professor, teaching professor, uh, that the term be allowed to be up to a nine-year period. What we've done uh, prior to bringing this to the uh, attention of the executive committee as well as uh, this larger body is to uh, have run it through legal. They have identified some other modifications that are uh, identified in this draft document. For example, there's a specific reference to uh, the emeritus policy of the board, policy 38, uh, instead of including language that used to say there shall be a policy adopted by the university or something like that. So in any case, uh, this is brought to your attention to solicit any suggestions that you might have for change. Uh, we don't have a specific timetable in play yet because I'm also going to take this to the uh, president's leadership team, our own provost leadership team, the deans, and uh, other constituent groups as well as groups like this to ask if there are suggested changes. We will consider those uh, in our faculty incentives and reward gr group. Uh, at some point, we will present this to the Board of Governors, after which, of course, there will be the customary 30-day comment period. So if you fail to suggest something over the next uh, generally Im immediate period of time and you have second thoughts, you'll have another shot. So at this point, um, oh yes, there's one other uh, thing that when we took it to legal initially, it was not entirely clear that WVU Tech was actually going to move to Beckley. So there's language at one point that suggests uh, that both WVU Tech and WVU Beckley exist simultaneously. Of course, that won't happen now that uh, the, the train has left the station for this other concept. But uh, we will fix that, of course, uh, as we go through this process. So I encourage you to review this carefully and um, send me your suggestions. If you have any, if you don't, uh, you can either confirm that you don't or do nothing. And beyond that, I'll be glad to take any questions you might have at this point. Here comes one. Hi, CB, Ann Lafasso in law. Um, if you have an, a nine-year appointment for a TAP, that's, that's essentially then um, 18 years because you would have had three years as a as an assistant, six years as an associate, and then nine years as a full. So you have an 18-year appointment at that point, and then maybe another nine year. So you're looking at an extremely long-term um, uh, contract, and you're looking at um, tenure is just, a, is just uh, an indefinite period of time for just cause dismissal, and so this would be just cause dismissal for nine years. Um, so it seems to me that there should be some thought given to what the difference is between tenure and a nine-year contract. Uh, it's my understanding that a TAP has responsibilities in service and teaching, but none in research, although I might be wrong about that, and that a, uh, the current tenure track faculty have responsibilities in three categories, um, although I understand there might be some research um, faculty who have um, who have um, their duties are in re only in research and in service. But what you could 
end up with is a situation where, um, in terms of merit review, that you would have someone has to be excellent in two categories, someone else has to be excellent in three categories, and, um, and then the person who's excellent in two categories could get a higher raise than the person who's excellent in two categories but very good in one. And that could cause a certain amount of friction between those two groups. So I think it might be very useful to have an open discussion about that, considering that this would be a very large step toward tenure, really, um, with a nine-year um, nine term, and um, think about how those two, what would be a fair solution? I don't have an answer to that, and nor will I be around next semester, though I'm happy to give you more thoughts on this, but these are just my thoughts as a person who is, who's dedicated her life to um, labor law and to fairness to employees, so, okay, thanks. All right, thank you. Um, I'm not sure I have a response to that yet. Yeah, no, I'm sure you don't. So although although I, it is fair to say that the uh, TAPs presently can use what was a service assignment divided b between research and service based on the last uh, uh, university guideline document that we approved here a couple of years ago. Yeah, that, that's another thing. It might be important to communicate to people, to other, to other members of the community, for example, the tenure track faculty, about what it is exactly that TAPS do. I, I just can anticipate that there would be some friction. And it's, that's the last thing anyone wants, I would think, especially the administration. And so I think an open discussion about how those two groups um, would be evaluated and what would be fair, I think would be very, very useful. Yeah, I, I, sh <clears throat> I think I can say at this point that in our working group, we have had some conversations about that. And uh, certainly one of the points that has been raised is uh, the importance of rewarding individuals for what they have been assigned to do, not necessarily based on the assumption that everyone will be assigned to do the same thing. So, but I appreciate the thought, okay? And this can be done through memorandum of understanding right now. Could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One more comment. I'm sorry. I, I just know other people, because I've heard people say this, I think it's important that there is definitely a substantial number of faculty that would say that, uh, rightly or wrongly, that, um, that, they, that some people are assigned to do um, teaching, research, and service, and those are three different categories of excellence that you need to be an excellent in, which is meaning you have to be excellent in three different things, which are, is completely different from being excellent in two different things. And that, therefore, you, some people, and I know this is controversial, but some people will feel that that's more difficult. And that they won't have, share the view that, that you just stated. And unless we talk about that, it's gonna cause problems. We might resolve it in the way you said, but I think we really do need to talk about that or we're going, and I'm not saying which way I feel, but if we don't talk about that, it's gonna have some major problems with how people would perceive their process because there's already a lot of perception, rightly or wrongly, that the tenure and promotion process is very subjective, especially for um, certain categories. And so it would be important to say, okay, how are we going to assess exactly how are we going to assess people and how is the, uh, the pool of money going to be divided. Okay. Thank you. I, th I think what, I'm Allison Bass uh, from Reed College of Media and I'm tenure track, but I think what um, CB meant by your comment at the end of her, uh, your first uh, comment was that I know in our school, for instance, TAP um, do have to teach more classes uh, than the tenure track. Uh, so even though they're only judged in two categories, they actually have a, a, a pretty severe workload, um, a greater workload than tenure track. So I, I think that's what you were referring to. On general principles, anyone who is a full-time faculty member will have a 1.0 FTE assignment. That may be divided up in various ways. Uh, it, it's true that some individuals, for example, those who use a research prefix uh, are primarily 
uh, assigned to do research. Uh, TAPs, uh, the term appointments, are primarily assigned to do teaching but have other assignments as well. Uh, actually, for pr purposes of promotion and tenure, I don't believe there is any category in which, uh, to use the term that Ann used, excellence is required in all three areas. Right now, for tenure track, it's significant contributions in two and reasonable in the third. Uh, certainly for those who have a prefixed appointment, the focus is on whatever that prefix is. Uh, but it's certainly uh, worth further discussion. So, thank you. Okay. Right. Okay, thank you, CB. Um, I think that brings us to new business. So, is there any new business? Hearing none, uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? And a second? Mo the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>